yeah in previous session we have discussed about uh, the basic concepts of logic what is logic what are the logic concepts and what is log logic programming yeah as part of uh, yesterday's previous session we have discussed the basic thing like why logic is being important as part of your artificial intelligence how logic can be applied in various places like what are the applications with respect to your chatbot how a chatbot can be uh, accessing your uh, queries how it will be responding and what are the reasons it, it need to be provided provided if any query is being asked that's what we have discussed in the previous session and i hope everybody is clear with that and let's go with this today's concept yeah so now uh, we are diving into the actual concept of your logic programming starting with your basics of your discrete structures so uh, the main understanding here is guys uh, discrete structures is already ex explained or learned by you in your previous years and now we will try to understand how those concepts can be used as part of your artificial intelligence that is the understanding what you need to have whenever you are learning your uh, upcoming concepts of your uh artificial intelligence so here we are not going to stress a lot on what is proportional calculus or what is uh what is a premise and what are the basics of your discrete structures we will have a glance at everything of that and later it's it's your duty to understand the previous concepts go through them properly have a knowledge or understanding on the previous concept whatever you have learned or uh, in your previous years about your discrete structures and here coming to your artificial intelligence with respect to your logic programming we will try to see how this concept can be useful in artificial intelligence how this logical statements or logical connectives this all can be part of your uh, upcoming uh, projects or upcoming innovations what are you going to do with your uh, artificial intelligence yeah so uh, initially we will discuss about your proportional calculus which is the first uh, second concept of your unit 2 and later we will move on to proportional uh, propositional logic which uh, where we will be discussing about the more concept of your discrete structures okay yeah so talking about your propositional calculus it is the branch of logic that's what we have uh, learned in the previous session about what is logic and what is logic programming so whenever you are talking about some logic programming or logical concepts you need to initially learn about your propositional calculus there you need to understand what is a proposition what is a premise what is a connective the basics of your discrete structures and then we will try to understand it with respect to some examples yeah so it is also called as propositional logic or statement logic or you can call it as sentential logic it's also called as zeroth order logic in yesterday's uh, session at the end i have shown you a small picture which is uh, explaining about first order logic similarly this is called as your zeroth order logic and moving on for your upcoming sessions we will also discuss about your first order logic and higher order logics how these logics can be understood how these logics can be applied with respect to your artificial intelligence we will also try to understand the basics of propositional logic with the basic examples okay yeah so what is this proportional propositional calculus how uh, what is the base of this so if i am learning about this with respect to artificial intelligence which means i am trying to make my roots stronger with respect to discrete structures and then i am applying this concepts in the artificial intelligence that's what is your understanding guys and you need to be thorough with this so it's not that we will be explaining about all the discrete structure concept here because of the time limitations we cannot explain all those concept so i will be in a assumption that everybody who is attending today's session has already uh, has already gone through these concepts because in the previous session i told that you need to go through your previous uh, initial concepts of your discrete structures that then only we can go, go through your next concepts so however we will try to uh, have a glance at what is that you need to understand with respect to discrete structures and accordingly we will go go for the next concepts okay yeah so talking about your propositional calculus it will deal with basically with your propositions like true or false so while learning your truth tables you are you are very clear, you are very familiar with these truth tables as part of your discrete structures and also at your primary levels you have learned about this truth tables where a statement is given whenever a statement is given it can be either true or false but not both this is what we call it as proposition yeah that is the basic thing and uh, going deep into proposition 
propositions are classified into two types compound propositions and atomic proposition so atomic proposition is something like you will be having no logical connectives but you will be having a small set of sentences and uh, compound propositions are linked with your uh, logical connectives and you will be having your uh, connectives uh, number of statements being connected and those are called as your compound propositions okay in the upcoming slides we will try to um, clearly understand the examples about what is this okay so uh, talking about your propositional logic so as i already said propositional calculus or propositional logic are same it's not a different topic both are actually same so as part of your syllabus they are given as separate topics so that's the reason i am also explaining it as separately yeah so but propositional logic is a part of your propositional calculus okay yeah so there you will be having some logical statements logical connectives linked to that we need to understand them and later uh, how to apply them with respect to your upcoming program or uh, algorithm development how this can be done okay yeah so coming to your definition of your propositional logic or a proposition is a declarative statement which is either true or false but not both so many of you uh, might have heard this in your discrete structures also the definition is same the statement will talk about either true or false but not both yeah so this is a technique which can be used for knowledge representation it can be in logical form or it can be a mathematical form so previously we have learned it with respect to your mathematical form now we will try to learn it with respect to your knowledge representation so because in the unit 2 the second part is about your knowledge representation we will try to understand how this logical concepts and logical programming can lead to your knowledge representation okay so as a sequence we need to learn all of these concepts and then need to apply them to your upcoming requirement yeah so now let's see a small example uh, talking about what is a proposition uh, as i said it can be either true or false and cannot be both if i take a uh, small sentence a is a is a uh, condition here like specifying a premise it is indicating a premise uh, a is equal to today is a tuesday so today is a tuesday is a preposition or premise given here and it is saying that today is tuesday so because today is tuesday i am saying that it is a true proposition if it is not tuesday suppose today is when if i say today is wednesday so because today is tuesday and i am talking that it's a wednesday it is called as false proposition in the same manner there are some examples given here 3 plus 3 is equal to 7 it is a false proposition this is what is the understanding about the basics of your proposition logic so here you are having some set of premises some individual premises according to that we are classifying them either it is a true proposition or a false proposition okay yeah so let's move forward and try to understand why proposition logic is the foundation of for artificial intelligence yeah so many people who are good at artificial intelligence uh, and also when i when i explained in the unit 1 about what are the prerequisites you need to learn with respect to your artificial intelligence there i said that you need to have knowledge of your mathematics properly so when i talk about mathematics discrete structures also comes under your mathematics only so now uh, we need to understand why proposition logic is a core part of your ai how this can be considered as a core what is that you need to learn with respect to your uh, propositional logic to make it uh, ca carry forward to your artificial intelligence yeah so now let's also try to understand how propositional logic concepts can be applied and uh, to ai and what are the applications of these logics by learning these logics how can i apply them to your ai okay yeah so uh, as as I, as we are computer science friends whenever you are trying to learn such type of concepts it's uh, as i said propositional logic concept is already discussed in your previous years so which means now again we are discussing and we are strengthening your roots at the ground level that's what you need to understand it's not that i'm uh, trying to learn something uh, previously no, learn learn thing it's a previously learned thing but for that we are adding some benefits and we are trying to learn something new now that's how i am strengthening my roots of the knowledge whatever i have developed previously and now i am trying to apply those concepts to your uh, upcoming uh, subjects okay yeah so uh, again talking about your logic with respect to your propositional logic studies how information is captured in sentences yeah 
So previously you can see there is a small sentence or a premise given here. And from this, I am having some information that today is Tuesday is some sentence. But this sentence is providing me some information that today is Tuesday and it is a correct statement. Now, the logic here is it is how should I carry or take some information from the sentences given and how it is possible for one statement to be the outcome of other. Suppose uh, here I am having only one statement, but sometimes I'll be having a, a statement connected to other statement also and one statement input can lead to other statement output. So uh, uh, understanding it with respect to your intelligent machine. So whenever uh, we are discussing about your AI guys, you need to think that you are, uh, you are an intelligent machine. You are not a human being. You are an intelligent machine which is trying to understand some inputs and uh, responding accordingly. So whenever required, we need to provide some information to the machine, but an intelligent machine should understand from the inputs given. It can be one sentence to other sentence or one statement to other statement. It need to understand the logic according to the inputs given and that should lead to some outcome. That is the main uh, thing what we need to understand as part of your intelligent machine with respect to your AI. Yeah. So now let's look at how these logics, propositional logics can be applied to which areas. So logics can be applied in designing of digital circuits. Yeah. The same thing was again uh, discussed guys. AI is not only meant for computer science student. AI is a multidisciplinary subject which has applications across every area because yeah, because data is available at every point of time. So wherever you are having data, wherever you are having some need, AI can help them in that area. It can be a mechanical, it can be an electrical or civil. Any, any branch can try to uh, come up with their own uh, understanding about your AI. And we as a computer science students need to understand or develop some program uh, to the problem, whatever they have given. So in the same manner, the logics, whatever you are going to learn here need to be applied for digital circuits because everybody of you might have studied your DLD subject. There you are having different gates and gate XOR gate and all those gates. Those are actually used for developing your digital circuits and chips, right? The same manner, this all logics will be used as part of your digital circuits. And from there, we will try to embed them into an application. It can be a robotic application or it can be an automatic machine, anything. Uh, those need to be learned and these logics can be useful at that area. Okay. Yeah. Knowledge representation is based on logical formalisms. Yeah. So how these logics, how these gates can be useful in the same manner, in the same way, you need to make an intelligent machine understand that this is the knowledge what you need to ensure if you want to get some output. That's the reason they call a uh, propositional logic is the foundation for your AI. Okay. Yeah. So uh, again, talking about your basics of propositional logic, it's a very simple thing. It's also called as your Boolean logic because basically we say true or false or yes or no. That's the only thing what it will understand. That's the reason uh, we need to have understanding of all the truth tables, how this can be used in circuits. These all things need to be useful. Yeah. And also how, what are the other applications of your uh, propositional logic or basically a logic. A logic is used for development of powerful search algorithms, including implementation methods. So it's not only that it will be used for your digital circuit, it can also be useful for your development of many search algorithms. So in unit one, we have seen various search techniques with respect to your data structures. In the same manner, if you want to develop some powerful search methods or algorithms, and if you want to implement it in various areas, you need to give a logic or a knowledge representation properly. That's the main application of this logic. Yeah. So mathematically logical operators combine propositions to make other propositions by following some specific rules. Yeah. It's very simple. You will be using your connective statement and, and or, or XOR, all the various logical operators, and you will try to combine various propositions. And finally, it should lead to some outcome. 
following some set of rules that's the basic thing which we already know okay yeah so uh, now let's see how propositional logic is used in artificial intelligence yeah so basically propositional logic is used in ai for planning problem solving intelligent control and most importantly for decision making this is the theme of your unit 2 yeah uh, whatever you are going to learn as part of your logic and logical programming and knowledge representation how why this can be this need to be learned so if you are learning this concept as i said in the initial slides about what are the outcomes you are going to get if you are learning your unit 2 this is the outcome what you will be getting once you learn this concept of your propositional logic it will be helpful for planning for problem solving for intelligent control for our machines and most importantly for decision making it can be games or it can be any puzzles or it can be any task with respect to ai if you are uh, trying to develop something new definitely this logical statements and propositional logic will be included in that that's how we need to concentrate on such type of things that will be easy for us to learn take it forward for the next sessions okay yeah so it's all about uh, boolean functions boolean logic true or false statements and sometimes it's not only that it's not only that true or false statements it is something beyond that it may include something like certainty and uncertainty levels how uh, and also this will be the foundations for your machine learning models that word the statement 2 is uh, describing here it's, uh, it's all about boolean functions and the statements where there are more than just true and false statements it also includes certainty and uncertainty which will lead to machine learning models so in the upcoming stages if you are working with some machine learning models with respect to your deep learning or artificial intelligence this will be your basics this will be the core of your next what we are going to learn okay yeah so it also can be used for your reasonings uh, knowledge representations but it has some limitations it cannot see inside prepositions yeah it cannot take its own decisions so uh, that is the basic uh, limitation of your ai also so every time we need to provide our own input every time you need it needs some intervention of human uh, human need for advanced thinking that's how there was one limitation which was already discussed the same limitation can be applicable here okay so what are the uh, important rules which we need to ensure while learning your propositional logic yeah so uh, the same points are discussed so we will be using symbols like a b c to represent your statements in truth tables we use p q r also it can be a b c or p q r to represent your prepositions that's what we have seen previously a is equal to today is tuesday so i'm using a there because you can use your alphabets or variables for your logic uh, representing your logic yeah so the statement it's already uh, explained propositions can be either true or false but it cannot be both these are some of the set of rules or the logics or the facts we need to ensure before learning your propositional logic yeah so propositional logic consists of an object relation or a function and logical connectives like and or implication by implication what so or not everything can be learned so uh, as part of your uh, truth tables while working with your truth tables you might have seen this a propositional formula which is always true is called tautology it's also a valid sentence and everybody need to agree with that and proposition formula which is always false is contradiction this is what you have learned previously and which is either not true and not false it is called as your contingency okay this is the basic rules of your uh, propositional logic the same things again here with respect to your properties of propositional logic a sentence or a premise can be true or false uh, whenever there are some connections or a number of premises connected it may lead to uh, suppose if i say p is a statement which is stating something and q is stating something p and q may lead to true or false sometimes true sometimes false or it can be anything like true or false so with respect to that we will be learning what is satisfiable property what is tautology which is always true and contradiction which is always false at the end of your table and contingency which can be neither true nor 
false. These are the properties of your uh, propositional logic. Now let's look into what is the syntax of this propositional logic. What are the different types of proposition? So a syntax here defines the allowable sentence for the knowledge representation. Yeah, this is something very, very important guys, because we are trying to develop an intelligent machine. We are trying to give some input to an intelligent machine with respect to a program or with respect to the logic, whatever you are going to design with respect to your algorithm. So whenever you are going to add some intelligence with respect to some machine or with respect to any algorithm, the knowledge should follow some structure. That's what we call it as syntax. The syntax only allows the valid agreements. So everybody of you know, while doing program, while writing your programs or the logics, you all follow some set of rules. The same manner, whenever you're going to develop an intelligent machine, you need to follow the syntax of propositional logic, then only it will be accepted or else it will not be accepted. That cannot give some knowledge to the machine. Yeah. So talking about ty types of propositions, there are two types of propositions like atomic propositions and compound propositions. Let's look into these types of propositions. So these all things, uh, as said already, no, you know, so I'm just trying to move a bit faster with these concepts because we need to discuss a lot about your uh, upcoming things. Yeah. So atomic prop propositions are the simple statements or simple propositions, which consist of a normal symbols. So here you can see the example, like two plus two is four. It is an atomic proposition and it's a true proposition. It's a fact that two plus two is four. Nobody can disprove this. So this is a true proposition and the sun is cold. So can anybody accept this statement? Definitely it's a false proposition. Likewise, the statements which are very simple to uh, take forward, these are called as your atomic propositions and the statements which are having some connections with the other statements are called as your compound propositions. So compound propositions are constructed by combining simple or atomic propositions. Okay. So here you can see the examples and also we'll be using your connectives here. It is raining today and street is wet. So here you're having two premises. One is it is raining today and second premise is street is wet. So combining to these two premises or two atomic propositions, you are, you are using the and connectivity here. So these are called as your compound proposition. So I hope everybody is clear with this two understanding, like what is atomic proposition and what is your compound proposition. Okay. So now let's look into the basics of your discrete structures. Like what are the connectives? What are the things uh, which you already know, which you already learned like two tables or logical connectivities, connectives uh, in your discrete structures, the same things will be carried forward for your uh, upcoming learning also. Yeah. So we can create compound prepositions with the help of logical connectivities. So logical connectivities are negation, Conjunction, the five connectives you already know, negation, conjunction, disjunction, implication, by implication. So these are the, these are the five connect, connection statements or the logical connectives, what we already know. So that's the reason I asked everybody of you to once uh, go back to your discrete structures and have a glance at these things. So uh, negation, which is a uh, uh, opposite of your statement, whatever you're going to give. Suppose if I say, uh, he is a good boy and the negation is he is not a good boy. So using not is a negation and conjunction. It's a representation of your and so Rohini is intelligent and Rohan sorry Rohan is intelligent and Rohan is hardworking. So you can say P and Q that Rohan is intelligent and hardworking. That's how we are using and connectivity here and connective and next we'll go for your disjunction, which is a or connective. Ritika is a doctor, is a, is a premise and Q states that Ritika is an engineer. So we can write which uh, Ritika can be either a doctor or engineer and they cannot be both. That is a very basic understanding. It can, then in the, that's the reason I'm using or statement here. I cannot say Ritika is a doctor and an engineer. That, that is not a true proposition. That's the reason we need to go for your or connectivity. Kritika is a doctor or engineer. That's how 
you need to use your or connective or your disjunctive connective next implication is the p implies q if it is raining then it is wet if condition if then rules will be used as part of your implication and next by conditional if and only if everybody know this example yeah so uh, if i say one premise that the weather is good p states that the weather is good q states that the sun is out it can be called as if the weather is the weather is good if and only if sun is out that is one statement which is talking about uh, the condition by conditional statement so you need to uh, have a glance at these connective statements after this class again for your upcoming sessions so summarizing these concepts so these are the five connectives what we need to learn as part of your uh, logical statements or propositional logic and then only this this can be used for your upcoming sessions like logic uh, propositional logic with respect to your ai okay so with this uh, i want to end today's session and tomorrow we'll be trying to get deep into the next concepts of your ai